so freaking bad. WrestleMania. Welcome, everybody, to Juice Pro Wrestling episode 109, Retro Mania Redux. That's right. With Juice and Sretton today, we are welcome, uh, welcoming our first returning guest <laughs> in the brainchild, the head honcho of Retro Mania Wrestling and Retro Soft Studios, one Mike Herman. What's going on, brother? Hey, hey guys. Thanks for having me back. I, and I feel special. The first repeat. <laughs> hey, yeah, that's right. We'll have to bring it on again so we can get a three-peat and do it three times so we can say, fuck the Bulls, ain't got shit on the JP Dub. <laughs> How you doing, brother? Pretty good. Staying busy. Uh, not enough hours in the day. Oh, man, I can imagine. Uh, you know, I, as I'm sure you've seen, you know, we've been keeping up tabs on you guys and oh, your yeah. progress with the game and, uh, you know, sharing it. And, man, we got a lot of people into this game that are ready and stoked and waiting for it to drop. Um, so tons of news since we last had you uh, on episode 78 as far as um, the, you, your guys' final roster is finally set up and ready to go, um, more arenas, more partnerships with uh, different uh, enterprises such as like pro wrestling tees. And, uh, you know, you guys had the NWA. I, don't, I can't remember if we did when we had you on last time if that was, uh, if that was a thing or not. I think it might have been. We might have just know. announced it, I think. I think so. I think it was afterwards. And I was like, yes! <laughs> but it was super cool because I, I remember watching that commercial on uh, NWA Power. And yeah. I was like, dude, that, that's what's up. <laughs> Man, that's what's up. Uh, so some great roster additions. Before we get into anything else, that's kind of something I want to touch on first because um, for those of you out there that are listening or, or watching this on YouTube, jpdub.com, hit like and subscribe. Boop, boop, boop. Um, this game will be available for Xbox One, the PC, PlayStation 4, and uh, ooh, which brings me to another question real quick, um, and Nintendo Switch. So before we get to this roster real quick, are you guys going to be doing anything as far as this, you know, the new consoles are going to be dropping this, uh, at what, fall or Christmas time? I mean, I'm assuming this is a new enough, going to be a new enough game where it'll just carry over. To those platforms or yeah we're finding that the the playstation 4 and xbox one don't have enough power for our 2d sprites so i think it may be a <laughs> uh, it may be a scarlet and ps5 exclusive now just because we don't have enough horsepower oh man horsepower you need that war horsepower <laughs> or yeah that um i think i think we um i know both systems are backwards compatible mm. so um we should be able to support um the new consoles as well um we're, we're still kind of trying to figure all that out and how it affects us but from, from what i've read we we can handle some stuff on our end to make sure it's compatible so we definitely will want to do that oh for sure now let's dig deep into this roster because you right. you have an eclectic mix of uh we got legends current superstars uh you guys got indie talent on here and that was one of my favorite aspects um early on when you guys had the the tournament to this was like the first time it was ever done uh in a professional wrestling video game you guys you threw out a, a tournament with a bunch of indie guys and said hey we're gonna let the fans vote who do you want to see in this game and i knew as soon as you announced warhorse i was like man that's money in the bank i, I just i knew it. i talked to him a few times about it uh at warrior wrestling and stuff i was like dude you got this you don't even have to sweat it man like you might as well tell everybody right now you're going to be in your first video game which is super <laughs> fucking cool um, so he's really stoked about it. I know last time I seen him at Warrior a couple months back, um, he was like telling me, he's like, man, dude, I, you know, they got a whole arena for me and stuff like this. It's going to be fucking cool. Um, so if you can just let everybody know, run down the roster of who you guys got signed on for this thing. Yeah, absolutely. So you mentioned Warhorse first and, you know, I'll give you when his, uh, arena that he, he designed it. Um, you know, he basically wrote it out on paper and then took a picture of it and sent it to us. So, <laughs> I love it. And it came out awesome. Like, it's done, and I'm playing it now. We're, we're, we're going to tease it soon. Um, we, we don't want to give it away. Initially, we were going to just let it kind of be a surprise at the game, but it's, it's like, too cool. It's too oh, cool yeah. to wait. Like, it'll, I think it's going to generate a lot of publicity for us. It just – the way it came out is just awesome. So, he did a really great job. So, yeah, we got War Horse. We got the – Legion of Doom, the Road Warriors, back from the original game. Uh, they're the only carryovers. Um, but we have the boss of the, of the tag team mode. 
We have the three members of the Blue World Order in there, Stevie Richards, or Big Stevie Cool, the Blue Guy, Blue Meanie, and Hollywood Nova. Um, <laughs> yeah. We got Tommy Dreamer uh, in the House of Hardcore. We got the NWA license and the, the real world's champion, Nick Aldis. Um, That's right. We, we got um, Jeff Cobb who uh, recently, uh, he's been all, all over the place. Ring of Honor, AEW, he's made in a couple appearances. New Japan, um, same with Zack Sabre Jr. He's made a couple of appearances different places. So we had Zack Sabre Jr. Um, we got Cole Cabana, who is boom, boom. Who's been, yeah, boom, boom. Uh, Cole Cabana is in. Um, Trying to go in order, and I, uh, Nikita Koloff was a recent announcement that we made, yeah. the Russian Nightmare. I love it. Yeah, uh, he's awesome. He, I've got to know him a little bit, or just through a couple exchanges via email. Just a super great guy. Um, and then our most recent signings are, no, Austin Idol, uh, back from really big in Memphis. Oh, uh, yeah. Another NWA legend. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just running through it here. Uh, and then the two most two recent guys we signed, were Matt Cardona and Brian Myers, who were recently uh, released. And I'm really excited to see where they end up as well. Um, yeah, that threw, me, that threw me off. I mean, uh, you know, I was following you guys were dropping hints on who it was going to be, and I was like, man, that was, that was pretty fresh. So were you in talks with them before their release? Or? We called them the day we, we heard about it. Nice. We, we got a hold of them, and the day we heard about it, we got on the phone with them. Um, and and we were able to to see, uh, sign them up, so uh, it was pretty quick negotiations. But I think we were the first kind of deal deal they signed um, after they were re released. And you know, we're just they fit really well into what we're doing. Um, oh yeah, and their I whole retro it. wrestling figure stuff and all that stuff. Uh, I was so, just gonna say, I can you know, I, I can see Retromania retro action figures i could see them guys helping get that done you guys get a line dude no doubt that would be super fucking cool yeah and it's just everything about them you know just really fits with um what we're doing uh, so we definitely wanted to get them them in the game and you know like i said it just really fits and then um the last uh the last guy we're missing here is the star of our story mode uh johnny retro <laughs> yeah for those of you that aren't aware that's uh john morrison that's right and you can bleep that if you want in case we don't want to get sued you know <laughs> no that's fine you can keep you can say it i can't oh all right <laughs> but yeah um current wwe superstar but you guys had that shit set up beforehand yeah well um, before several months actually we were sitting on it a while just trying to figure out the best time to announce them and then when he mm -hmm. he called us and said hey i'm resigning he with uh, with them, I'm like, no problem. We're already using our own copyrighted name for you, and it was right. funny because he doesn't own any of the gimmicks. <laughs> really, <his> real name. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many Johnny names too. I know, I know. I, oh, man, Johnny Mundo. You got Johnny Nitro. Uh, shout out to our boys, um, Mondo Lucha up in Wisconsin. He Johnny Mondo. <laughs> yep. it's just everywhere. Yeah, oh, so um, it really shaped up well. And then um, we're actually, uh, I think we're going to be announcing our first DLC character that's going to hit post-launch uh, very Ooh. soon as well. Ooh, you guys going to drop any hints or are you just going to go full-fledged and drop it all out there ha at once? Hashtag DLCB. That's mm. your hint. <laughs> DLCB, huh? Yeah. Hmm. Got my mind spinning already. <laughs> who is it? Where's the snake? Yeah. <laughs> I know who it is. Who is it, Sredden? I don't know. I know, you piece <laughs> of shoe. <laughs> you keep quiet down there, damn it. <laughs> um, so going along with uh, the roster, not only do you have that, but like I was saying earlier, you guys have a killer arena set up. I mean, you guys are going to be doing the NWA Power is going to be an arena. Yep. Um, you got the War Horse Arena. Um, pro wrestling tees has their own arena. Um, how many more arenas you guys got in this game? I think the ones we haven't showed yet, we have at least four distinct, completely distinct arenas that we haven't shown yet. Um, 
and then we are going to have a bunch of different like color changes and string um, ring uh, color changes, different tones of those. But I think when all said and done, we'll have over 10 unique ones and then we'll probably double that number with the different, different like color schemes, different logos and a couple of tweaks to each of them. Nice. And uh, so as far definitely as definitely a lot more variety than the original. Oh, yeah, yeah. And for those of you out there listening and watching that don't know, this is the official sequel yep. to the old school arcade Smash Hit Wrestle Fest. Used to pump quarters in that motherfucker at Celebration oh. Station all the time. <laughs> yeah, I, I played a ton of it. They had one uh, where I went to school. They had one in the common area, a Wrestle Fest. I can't, I what? don't even remember how many quarters I went through. That's so awesome. Um, getting into match types, though. Because I think you guys have added on some more stuff with that, too. Yeah. So you're going to have your Royal Rumble type match or Battle Royale, I should say. Retro Rumble. Um, Retro Rumble. Retro Rumble. Damn it. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> um, you a guys lot of stuff have... to beep. I know, right? Uh, heart, you guys are going to have some hardcore matches, obviously. Um, weaponry and all that good stuff. Take us through some of the match types you guys have. Yeah, so um, as I said a few minutes ago, we have a story mode uh, where you'll play as Johnny Retro. So it's not like uh, Skyrim or any game like that. It's not this <laughs> multi-arcing, Breath of the Wild, you know, uh, masterpiece story mode. But it's just enough to give you a taste for the different personalities in the game uh, and take you through. Um, and you will have choices. There, it is it is multi-branching, but nothing nothing. Uh, Nothing too elaborate, but just a fun story that we hired a writer uh, to write for us who's a huge wrestling fan, uh, and he did a really good job on it. Your first decision, I'll give you a little hint, is whether or not to join the BWO. So uh, that'll be one of the decisions you have to make. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, that's choice has already been made. It's a choice <laughs> for me and a choice of a new generation. <laughs> So we got our story mode. We have our 10 pounds of gold mode, which is your typical like fighter game, fighting game, uh, play through the roster, win the championship, then defend your belt and, um, you know, play through it again. So, and in that mode, you'll have different match types that you'll have to win depending on, you know, uh, who you go through with and things of that nature. Um, and then in addition to the 10 pounds of gold mode, you have versus mode. Versus is where you can basically do anything you want with any of the options we have in the game. So you can do a singles match, tag team match, six-man tag, eight-man eight tag, um, three-way match, four-way match. You can have any of those variations can be either a cage match, uh, falls count anywhere match. Um, uh, you can have, if it's a tag mode, you can have a tornado or traditional and if it is a tag, again, if it's a tag mode, you can either do elimination or a traditional match as well. So, and any combination of any of those. Um, and then you have, uh, in your retro rumble, you can determine how, how often the entrants come out, um, how many people are in it, how many are in the ring at once, how many people start in the ring at once. You could actually do a traditional battle royal, or you could do kind of like a gauntlet if you wanted to, where there's only ever two people in and the winner stays. So nice. there's a lot of different match types to add as much replayability as we can to the game and keep everybody interested uh, <clears throat> as, long, as long as we can. And there, there will be uh, online multiplayer for this, right? Not at launch. Uh, it's something we actually already started working on, but it's not going to mm -hmm. be ready for launch. It's just it's super buggy right now. And we right. really need to refocus like everybody on the team to just be working on that to do it right. Um, right. you know, I, I read a lot of horror stories. Even recently, there was some game that's been going through it now where their online multiplayer isn't any good. Um, and we don't want to go through that at all. Oh, yeah. I mean, in, it's it's some many ways I think people will enjoy this game enough that, you know, you'll, they can wait for it. You know, right. wait for quality. You'd rather have that than uh, have a <coughs> 2K situation on your hand. <laughs> <laughs> no comment on that one I don't... <laughs> it's all good i'm not i'm not fishing i, I just i i was uh i saw it was on sale on xbox for i think it was like 15 or 20 bucks now and i was like ah should i do it should i do it no nah, no nah, i shouldn't do it <laughs> i could i could bring myself to do it because i love reading the reviews you know i think people are pretty honest for the most part in uh the review section when you before you buy a game and Right. It just, it, it, even still to this day, it's just, unfortunately, it's super buggy. and But that's all right. You know, that's them. We're talking about you. I I can't wait for the Retromania. This is, 
this is going to fucking rule. It's, there's so much different stuff going on with this game. Um, a little bit of old school, new school, the future of pro wrestling. Um, that it, it's very different, I think, from anything else that's been offered in a very long time. And that even that's even considering, uh, whatchamacallit, what's the damn game? Uh, Fire Pro, right. which I haven't been I, – I bought the game. I haven't been able to get used to it. And it sucks because there's so much shit you can do in there, and I just right. I can't get the timing and shit down with it. And I read all the reviews like, well, you know, it's great. Once you get the timing down, you have a lot of fun. Yeah, it's tough. I mean, I, I've been playing Fire Pro since it was on the Saturn. Um, and it oh, took, shit. Yeah, it took a while to get, you know, the time down. But it's more of a simulation. But I was always – I my preference was always the arcade-style games. Um, always. Fast. Like, I don't get me wrong. I played a ton of Fire Pro. I mean, I had the six-player – tap for the Saturn, six controllers, <laughs> I play with my friends on it. So I, I definitely, there's a place for it in my library for sure. But I, oh, yeah. do, I do like the change of pace that arcade style games bring as well. Oh yeah, it, it, to me it's just, uh, and I'm such like an ADD type of guy, I guess. I just, I want my action, I want it there, I want it fast, I want it, I want it now. You know, I want to veg right. out on this stuff. I don't want to have to concentrate too much on specific timing of a, of a move. Um, which really is no knock to them. I just got to invest more time into it because it's still it's still a great game. There's a lot of stuff you can do. Um, and I really love their creative character, which brings yep. me to my next point. <laughs> I'm sure you've been asked a million times, what are we going to get? Are we going to get a creative character? So, you know, at some point we hope to. Uh, and, and really, you know, the reason we're not doing it at launch is just, Honestly, we don't have a big enough budget to put all the features into the initial launch of the game as I would love to do. Like mm -hmm. the create a character mode, just women in general. Like I want to do female wrestlers too. Uh, it's just they're all different models. Even in 2D, 2D speak, there's different animations we'd have to draw, different models. We basically used four kind of models for our, for our men. So we have like a tech build, a strong build, a heavy build, and like a super heavy build. We'd have to do the same. Th we have to do the same thing with all the women to do it right. Um, so it's just yeah. In an ideal world, we'd have everything at launch, and same with create a wrestler. We'd have to have we have to have so many more animations than we currently have, and we have a decent amount of animations. Uh, like over three hundred moves, I think, are in our game. So you know, WrestleFest probably had under a hundred. Yeah, um, the original <laughs> one. You know, i have probably maybe under fifty. Um, you know, so we definitely added a ton of moves to the game. But in order to do create a wrestler properly, we have to add a lot, lot more. So we hope, you know, we're really concentrating on getting that, that foundation laid of this initial game. Make it fun. Build our fan base. Show that there's an audience for it. And then reinvest that into the game to make additional features. Well, that's awesome that, you know, you're continuing to support the game. Um, I don't think there's really enough of that these days. I mean, maybe with certain games, uh, I'm seeing it now with uh, a game like uh, I'm a big fighting game fan too, uh, Mortal Kombat. I was happy to see them come out with like the aftermath. Like for the first time ever, they have storyline yep. DLC, well, which was super awesome. And then of course you got RoboCop. Uh, <laughs> you yeah, guys that was check pretty out. cool. Oh man, dude. I, you know, being a kid of the eighties and all that, and then just loving my violent and horror movies and action movies <laughs> and stuff like, that was that was the icing on the cake. Now, if they just drop Ash Williams, I mean, I'll be I'll be in absolute heaven. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> awesome. Didn't they have like uh, something like uh, Mortal Kombat Mythologies or something Sub Zero? Oh, dude, I, we're talking way back in the day. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you want to talk about a steaming pile of shit? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it was, it was like really a PlayStation back. game or something. Uh, yeah, I think it, it might have been on PlayStation. That was on N sixty four. Uh, it was it was just bad. They they branched out a few times and did like I think there was another one called Shaolin Monks. Yep, yep. Um, that I've actually I I've heard it got pretty decent reviews. So I, I've never played that one. I always stuck with just the base games because anything that branched off was kind of like why why are you doing that? Don't do right. that. <laughs> right. But uh, yeah, I love I love when you can support a game and uh, you know keep adding quality to it and and not making people go and buy a new game like every couple years. You know right. like. Maybe stretch it out a little bit longer, you know, and just add more content on. I mean, right. shit, you look at games like uh, Call of Duty now, which that game has been on almost a year uh, for Modern Warfare, I think is the latest one. I can't tell you how many gigs of updates that I've had to do for that game. 
Right. It's it's just absolutely ridiculous. The last one was like a 30 gig update. And <laughs> how do you get a 500 gig Xbox? What, what's going on? <laughs> Yeah, but I, and that's cool because the day and age we live in now, we can do updates after we launch, you know, whereas right. you're kind of stuck with what you got back before, you know, the advent of online play and all that. And it's funny, you think everybody would take advantage of that, but, you know, you still have, um, you know, kind of big, big companies just need that revenue stream every year. Yeah. So they got to kind of, uh, the you know, video game prices really haven't, come down at all they're probably actually cheaper when you take in inflation than they were because i remember i remember paying i think 80 dollars or something for street fighter 2 on the genesis yeah oh yeah i do man i I think i might have got a controller with that but you know it was like a 10 dollar controller or something and 70 bucks for the game oh yeah i remember super mario brothers 3 when i bought that at toys r us and it was ridiculous i think it was close to like 70 bucks and we're talking, you know, 30 years ago. That's, right. <laughs> it, right. What does that equate to now, you know? Right. Ridiculous. Now I think it's like a new game is generally like 64, 19 or something. That's with tax. Right. That's cool. Well, some of these games, uh, you got different price points in games too, like with your guys' game. You know, it's like, yeah. it's not, that's super awesome, you know? Yeah, we're coming in at twenty four ninety nine for pre-orders. And um, we'll go to twenty nine ninety nine when we launch. Now, speaking of pre-orders, um, so you can pre-order right now via Steam and Nintendo, right? Yeah, only on our store, though. though. So okay. the, way, the way all the publishers work is you need to get closer to your release date before you can actually go on, like, Steam Store, eShop, the PSN Store, and Xbox Store. So we'll be on all of those stores when we're 30 days out from launch. Mm. And we'll offer the same $5 off discount then as well. Cause not everybody's comfortable buying from our website, which I'm totally on, you know, no, no worries with that. So it'll be out and we'll, we'll still extend that pre-order price uh, once it's out on all the actual console stores as well. And will you guys be doing, uh, cause I, I saw on your website, you got like the case where you get like the stickers and stuff yeah. with that. Yeah, so we have a digital plus edition because um, we don't have a physical one planned yet. We are talking to a couple companies about it, mm. um, but everybody's like, well, let's wait and see how it does. So we can't really promise that yet. Right. Um, so it's definitely something I want to do. I think this game's are perfect for a physical release uh, somewhere. I think there's a good audience for it. So we're hopeful we can make that happen. So, um, what, but they're all telling us, you know, wait till digi- it goes digital first and then we'll talk. Uh, but we're talking to a couple companies about it right now. We need to get Stevie on board. Isn't Stevie the one making uh, your, your cabinets and stuff? Yeah, so he put that together. Uh, so we reached out, and he has all the info on his YouTube video, but we reached out together to an arcade guy, and he made the cabinet, and then Stevie put it together. And did all put the artwork on. I helped. We helped. I helped them design the artwork and all that. I, I mean, could you imagine a Retromania arcade one up? Come on, yeah, you know. uh, <laughs> it would be cool. Yeah, the, the, yeah. We've talked. I've talked to a couple now behind me. Uh, if you can see a little bit, it's not a great lighting, but I have an at Legends or at Games Legends Ultimate. So, if you're not familiar with that, that is kind of a multi-cade where it has um a trackball two spinners two joysticks uh six buttons on each controller and we ha- we were at pax east a couple months ago and we took it there and we were playing retromania on that arcade um and that <laughs> thing's reskinned to be a retromania arcade as well nice yeah so they did they they, they uh they gave us that unit and, and you know and we we've been we the plan was to take it out with us as we were planning on going to a couple of conventions this summer. Now, a lot of that's probably not going to happen until maybe September, but um, that, that'll be the plan. So with, I mean, with this whole thing going on, this whole uh, pandemic and whatnot, has this uh, kind of slowed the process for you guys or anything like that? A little bit. You know, we were already remote, you know, for the most part. We don't have an office. Like, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm based outside of Philly. We have people pretty much in every time zone. We were on, we were represented on five of the seven continents on this planet. So we have people all over the place, but you know, everybody was affected a little bit differently on our team. So we definitely right. lost some time and lost a little steam. 
And then, you know, we got that chance. We were going to launch with 14 characters, but then when Matt and Brian became available, we couldn't pass them up. So uh, and we were able to sign them. So I'm like, we'll get them into launch. So we hired, we hired three more artists to try to hit our date. And we hired two more programmers actually that started this week as well, just to help us get all of our moves programmed into the game. So uh, we're doing our best to get as close to that July release as we can. But I will say we're not going to push it out if it's not ready. I'd rather take a couple extra weeks to put some more polish on it. And I think people will appreciate it. We'll get a little bit of flack because people love to complain. Um, but as long as we're not Duke, Duke Nukem forever, I think we'll oh, be, come on. <laughs> we'll, be, we'll be forgiven. We'll be forgiven. <laughs> Yeah, no, yeah, <laughs> Duke Nukem forever. Yeah, what was that? Like fourteen years or so? Yeah. <laughs> hey, well, you waited thirty years for the sequel to this game. You can wait a couple more weeks. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> oh God, it would end up becoming I. <clears throat> I had that. It was on three sixty, I believe. Yeah. Oh God, that was a shit game. <laughs> <sighs> Anyways, thanks for reminding me about that, Mike. Uh, no the worries. Well, guy. <laughs> <laughs> um. So. With uh, with your cast and everything that you guys got going on, your all the licensing and all that, was there anybody that you can think of right now that you you really wanted to get and it just it either it fell through or it couldn't happen or you were like that close to getting and you're just like damn you know maybe next time around. Well, the guy I want to get and I think at some point maybe in next year he may become available, but it's Magnum TA uh, from oh, yeah. the NWA. I, I've I've always. I, he was my first favorite wrestler. Uh, oh, awesome. growing up. Like I remember him winning the US title against yep. Wahoo McDaniel in a steel cage with the <laughs> belly yeah. belly suplex, you know? <laughs> Good times. <laughs> <laughs> so I just think, you know, it's a shame what happened to him. I think he really would have blown up. But like oh, yeah. he was my guy when I was, you know, I'd probably say ten years old. Eight, eight maybe eight, maybe even a little younger than that. But I, I loved him. The I the I quit match with Tully Blanchard. And the um, the best of seven with Nikita Koloff that he did, yeah. You know, so I have really good memories. I, I hope we can make that happen at some point. Um, I think you know he's definitely interested. I can say that. Uh, it's just it's a licensing issue right now. There's a conflict of interest. So uh, we're hoping maybe next year, or hopefully it doesn't go longer than that. But I'm hoping at some point next year we can get that done. Awesome. Um, I saw too. Uh... Did you keep up with the entire season, uh, Dark Side of the Ring? Oh, yeah. I've seen every one of them. <laughs> uh, the Road Warriors one, I, super odd. I mean, they're all yeah. great. Um, and I kind of you know, know that story. A lot of us do. I mean, especially if you had the, what was it, the, uh, the WWE DVD they put right. out like 10, 15 years ago. Um, I just I thought that was super cool, man. You know, you got Animal in the game, uh, Dark Side of the Ring. Uh, what was your thoughts on that whole entire season, man? I just, that's a really well done show. I mean, I watched all season one and all season two. And mm -hmm. it's funny, the, one of the real interesting ones this year that I had never even heard of was the other UWF. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, I don't know where I was or it just wasn't, didn't play around here. Now, granted, I did not have cable growing up. So if it was mm -hmm. on cable television, I, I would have missed it anyway. Because, like, I missed all the TBS stuff unless I went to my cousin's house. Who lived in Ohio, so that was like an eight-hour trip. So they, I, would see it, I would see it a couple oh, times a year, but I had no idea that it even existed. And they had a lot of star power. Um, oh, they uh, had Andre. Andre, yeah. that was like before, like right before he passed, too. Yeah. So that one was really, and then you know the whole Owen Hart thing, just tragic because he would have been huge. And and they made a good point. I think it was in the documentary, unless I read it somewhere else though. But that was right before, like. Uh, Eddie Guerrero and Benoit and all those guys that he could have worked with. Uh, yeah. Really got – and Jericho, you know, for that matter. Oh, yeah. Uh, who They could have had great matches, you know. Uh, it just – it sucks that all that happened, you know. Yeah, it took me back, man. I, I remember, you know, the day it happened. Um, I wasn't watching that pay-per-view, but, it, you know, I had friends that were, and you get phone calls and, like, hear this shit and – it's like, damn, man. Like, uh, I was actually, I just, uh, quick story for you real quick. My, uh, my newborn son, Milo, he's, he's real colicky, man. Real colicky. And it stinks. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, we had a uh, double or nothing on the pay-per-view and I was so elated because I, he just wouldn't stop crying. And then like, we had him on the floor on his blanket and he, he like 
He caught the pay-per-view, and for like two hours straight, he was just enamored with it. I'm like, he he's fucking likes pro wrestling. Hey, like, get out of here. He was awesome. And so now it's like if you ever if he's fussy, we'll, we'll throw wrestling on him. I shit you not, man. He like he just snaps out of it. That's and, awesome. uh, I was watching um so I put on the Owen and Brett match for him from WrestleMania ten. Oh yeah, that's awesome. And I saw uh the Owen Hart Foundation on Twitter posted something about the new t shirts uh that came out um from Pro Wrestling Tees, which is also really cool. Yeah. And uh I posted that video on there. They're like, that's got to be the cutest baby ever. <laughs> I was like, that's <laughs> awesome. Thank you. But, man, <clears throat> I, I also listened to Martha on Jericho's podcast, and he brings up a good point. I mean, Owen was really ahead of the curve as far as, like, what a lot of people are doing nowadays. You know, I mean, back in the day, a lot of people weren't doing Owen stuff, you know, like right. the backflips, and he was he – was, he was all around. He could do anything, you know, yeah. the comedic aspects, the actual – professional wrestling you know he could get like his dad and stretch him stretch right. him <laughs> um man dude it just yeah it's it it hit me kind of hard because i'm like fuck man it was just it was a flame that was snuffed out way yeah, too soon sucked. and uh you know and how far can you really read into it you know 20 some years later and have like animosity towards the company or negligence or whatever i mean you, you can hold that animosity at some point it's got to be let go because who who knows you know what happened i mean right. you can't fucking reverse it so it's it's just a shame but uh yeah owen's awesome man um yeah I would, I would love to get him in i yeah i was just i was just gonna suggest that who knows who knows what's yeah we, road, we actually you know? reached out we we're having a hard time getting a hold of anybody there and i'm not sure how many how many things uh martha wants to do not to put right. words in her mouth. So I don't know if she's interested or not, or would be interested or wouldn't be. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, we're definitely going to, we're definitely going to see if we can, you know, if there's any way we can do it, we would love to. And we would do it like donate all proceeds to the Owen Hart Foundation. You know, I'm not even looking, I wouldn't even be looking to make money off of it. Um, that would be super I, awesome. I just think it would be cool to have them in the game. So. Oh, yeah. For sure. It's been, it's been so damn, so damn long since he's been in one. Yeah. Um, kind of moving on uh, a more positive note outside of the dark side of the ring because yeah. they kind of got into some, they got some hairy shit. Uh, I did like how you brought up the cocaine and cowboy boots. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was that was really good. If you're going to go out, you might as well go out like that, right? Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> What's some of the uh, wrestling that you've been – have you been watching anything lately? You've been keeping up with like NWA or AEW, what you can keep up with, I yeah. might add? A little bit, not a ton. I'll tell you, I, almost all of my free time is going to working on the game. Mm. <laughs> so I'll, I'll watch mostly like uh, recap videos online uh, more than actual sitting down and watching the events right now. Right. Um, what's causing all this? The new uh, NWA series, uh, mm. since I'm such a big fan of his. Uh, but um, I haven't been watching too, too much, but I still keep up on everything. Do you check out Carnyland? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we were talking about that on uh, last week's episode. Sretton has yet to watch it. Oh, so, really? I, I, I recommend it. I, I, was, uh, I work from home now, and uh, I was going to put it on while I – because I, I usually listen to things. Now, I, I want to hear – I usually hear something first, especially on YouTube. I'll listen to it first, and then I'll watch it. I know it sounds weird, but – that's how I like to do it. Right. Uh, and I was going to do it today, but I was like, no, this is something, the way that Justin's been hyping it. Um, I definitely need to sit down and just enjoy it and savor right. it. Right. So I would agree with that. I might that. do that yeah. tonight before I go to sleep, but yeah, next couple of days I'll watch for sure. I'm excited to watch it. It's good. And they got two episodes out now yep. every Tuesday. So until we get back to uh, the norm, which is who knows when the hell that's going to be. Uh, hopefully sooner <laughs> rather than later. Yeah. Right. Getting a little antsy, you know. I I I was never furloughed or anything. I, I continued working throughout this entire situation, which is, I mean, it, it's good and bad. There's pros and cons. I mean, yeah, I still got a steady paycheck, but it's still kind of scary when you have to deal with the public, you know, and you don't right. know who's who, and people are coming in coughing or whatever. It's like, uh, eh, yeah, get my garlic out and all that shit. <laughs> Keep them vampires away, right? I went. I went. I got a story to share real quick. I went to the grocery store last week and. Um, the majority of people were wearing masks, doing the social distancing, being respectful, all that stuff. And, and this older lady 
we were we were in the fruit aisle, and this older lady coughed, and everyone turned their heads. <gasps> <laughs> I was like, "Oh man, <laughs> leave her alone." She just coughed. She, she might have cleared her throat. And, yeah. And, it, and I guess everybody like I'm mindful. That I don't. T- I I just was touching my face, but I won't touch my face. I won't cough or anything. But man, I just I thought it was crazy. She coughed, and everyone turned their head. Um, but I think people are. Um, they're the right amount of cautious, and I think they're, you know, for the most part, respectful, despite what the news is saying. Uh, but uh, like week week two of people staying at home when you went grocery shopping or for supplies, that wasn't the case. There was like an eeriness. There was like a weird vibe in right. the air, and now it's not. Uh, it's not so bad. So yeah. Yeah, where if you'd make a noise, everyone would stare at you. Like, yeah, why are yeah, you oh, out of your yeah. house? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. God forbid you cough or something. It's oh, like right. the worst thing ever now. Like, the hell? <laughs> Stay away from this guy. He's deaf. But what I do, what, uh, uh, so there's like a, there's a, a large number of reasons I'm super excited for the game to come out. But if it doesn't come out in July, let's just assume it does. But if it does not, either way, what's cool now is a lot of people are spending a lot of time at home and rediscovering video games and rediscovering stuff that they like, rediscovering old stuff. Just they're just there's a lot more time to get into these like slower paced. Well, I should shouldn't say slower paced. I should say the time that uh for to do to do things at home. Um, and the majority of people are still going to stay at home. So when the game does launch, I I'm hopeful that it's going to be as big of a hit as I think it is going to be. Um, because of that fact, people are going to see just how fun it is. Um, and and like I, I am a big fan of like the arcade style. Like uh, right. I remember loving like NBA Jam and stuff. Oh yeah, that was awesome. Yeah, I, can't get, <laughs> I can't get too like I I love playing video games, but I suck at them. So <laughs> I play and I and and I just keep playing. But I'm terrible. We had a we had a uh, tournament. Um, was that was that two years ago, Justin? Yeah, yeah. No mercy. We had a tournament at the bookstore. I had and. Uh, just to tell you how bad I am at video games, I think there was 13 or 14 of us playing, uh, mm. two children. Um, and one kid, I think, was eight, nine, something like that. I, I don't even think it was that. Oh, yeah. He, let's say he was six. <laughs> he knocked me out of the tournament. He um, kicked your ass. So, what game yeah. was it? No Mercy. Oh, yeah, really? Then, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> So he just, I started mashing buttons and the kids started mashing buttons and he was better at it. So (laughs) that was that, but it was super fun. So that's what it's all about. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I got to love the classics. What, uh, so last time we talked, um, well, actually before I get into this, I want to ask you something too, because, um, when Seren's talking about, you know, seeing the game and, you know, he's, he knows people are going to enjoy it. I mean, it's cool because you guys have been doing a, uh, like it's a weekly uh, YouTube series, right? Kind of like keeping fans up to date on what you're working on and everything. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, we started that on May 1st. So we're just about done our first month of doing that. And actually it's two videos a week. We do a developer's vlog on Fridays and then mm-hmm. a kind of a fact thing on, on Wednesday with just, we typically cover like the real commonly asked questions or pick one to go through it. Um, the one that we released this morning was how we became the official sequel to WrestleFest, which is one of the common questions we get a lot. Now, I know most people will still ask that on Twitter all the time, and, but you know, as long as the information is there, we can at least now we have a link to post um, where we can put some of the stuff up. But it's just, you know, we really wanted to, what we found, and I didn't really know this, but I've learned a lot through social, about social media going through this. You know, I figured if one person was on one thing, they're typically on everything. And it's really, I've noticed that we have, it's really distinct audiences where someone usually picks what social media they're more comfortable with. And they, they really just look on that one. So the, the followers on Instagram are almost not completely, there's definitely some overlap, but it's a lot less overlap than I thought with like Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. So one of the things where we were really lacking was YouTube followers. And I don't. I think there's a big YouTube audience there that would be very interested in our game. But oh, yeah. We just didn't have a big YouTube presence, so we wanted to grow that presence. <clears throat> so we decided let's start putting out regular videos on YouTube um, to try to grow the the audience there. And we've like doubled in a month. So oh good, no doubt, I wouldn't doubt it. They have a good gaming community. It's it's yeah. it's funny you say that because it's something I noticed too. And you know you have people that will just stick with solely Twitter or Facebook or whatever at all. You know, when you're trying to do something like you're doing or like we're doing with the show, it's an unfortunate thing because it's, 
Well, it's unfortunate because I'm the one having to control it all. Right. That piece of shit. Um, you know, you got to be spread out. You really got to be everywhere because it, I feel like you're leaving, you know, potential followers or friends yeah. or however you want to look at it on the table um, because you're not at, you know, a perfect example is I just got, we just got on TikTok. I didn't want to even mess with it. Right. But the, as soon as I did, you know, people were there and views were there and, uh, it's, it's, it's just crazy. You really got to be, if you're trying to do something productive that you want everybody to know about, uh, you got to be everywhere. Yeah, and you got to use if, all the tools you have available. Yeah. Yeah. Most definitely. And, and, and it could be a real struggle sometimes because you, you get spread thin, you know, and you feel like, I know at least with me, it's like, man, you know, I'm posting this here, I'm posting this there. Like, is that, should I be doing it here since I already posted that here, you know? And it's like, it's, oh, it's just, it, you got to hire some like social media mogul to figure this shit out. So well, that's what I did. Ah, <laughs> he's a smart guy. So yeah. I do, I definitely do a lot of our social media, but the, like the kind of the, the, the routine posts he mm -hmm. are actually most of the initial posts he'll make. I'll post the stuff that's real specific. Like right. uh, if I'm testing at like midnight or something and I come across a cool bug or just a cool new video. I'll post stuff like that. But our social media guy does a great job. Uh, he's another Mike. We have actually three Mikes on our team, but uh, <laughs> Mike T does a great job with our social media. He really uh, hammered it out of the park. You know, he he does a lot of relevant stuff, and it's not just about our game. It's just wrestling and video games in general. So I think we're a pretty cool follow. If you do follow people on Twitter, we have a lot of interesting stuff that comes up as well. Uh, but he 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 runs our our Instagram, Twitter account, uh, YouTube, and Facebook. Um, you know, I answer a lot of the questions, but he helps me. He's well-versed in everything related to the game. So we, we kind of double-team the, the comment sections and answer as much as we possibly can. Have you guys uh, – are you guys on Twitch at all? No, we are not – we have not done that yet. I think one of our artists uh, occasionally streams her doing mm -hmm. the artwork. Um, but we, we don't – I think there's a bunch of – we have a pretty – growing media uh, press list now with a bunch of uh, Twitch streamers and Mixer streamers on it. So I think we will at some point, um, you know, maybe get a demo unit to some of them or if you're freaking me out with the camera here. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Sorry to distract you. It was, I was relying on natural light and the natural light was starting to fade. So I had to, <laughs> I'm like, it looked like you were dancing or something. <laughs> I, well, I kind of was. So. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but so, yeah, we haven't done much live streaming. Um, I think that'll probably come out once we actually launch the game. I think we'll have a lot of, a lot of partners in that area. Oh, yeah. It's I think huge. the game's going to be – I think it's ripe for YouTube and Twitch streaming. Yeah. Like commentary and, yeah, just having fun with people, playing with people. And the yeah, it's funny because like one of the biggest things – not biggest, but something I found a, a very common uh, request that I – I know I personally never really do it much in games, but just CP AI versus AI, CPU versus CPU matches. Yeah, uh, and it was a, really a common request, and I know that's big in the Fire Pro community for sure. Mm. Um, but we've got a ton of requests for that, so we we added that in, so you can run any of the matches with just AI if you want to. Well, that's and that's weird. Um, I mean, I always did that with like No Mercy back in the day. I mean, I'm talking like even when it first came out. And so, like, when we, you know, started doing the show and trying to get, like, ideas for content for YouTube, and actually, I do have one match that's on there, and it was just, like, a test run that I did several years ago. It was, like, create a character, Joey Ryan versus Scott Hall. Right. Um, you know, just let the computer decide who's best. Um, but that's something that I always wanted to get into and do more. And uh, shout out to, like, our homie uh, Mikey from Black Label Pro, who does that with the, the Fire Pro now. Yep. And uh, it's it's this huge community. I mean, it, it but it's really cool because with games like that, when you have like endless possibilities of creative characters, I mean, it, it really could go on for a long time. And even if you didn't have something like that, I still think it's awesome the the possibility of this dream match, uh, or, or whoever you want to put together with these characters on that roster and let the computer decide. I mean, it, it's. Right. Fuck it, you know, make the match happen without you controlling it. It's like it's like watching, essentially watching a wrestling match, you know. 
That's, yeah, that's, that's how I one of the reasons we want to keep building that roster and add, you know, we have a, we have a ton more features that we would love to add at some point. You know, mm-hmm. we don't really have a career mode or anything like that or booking your matches, but we have a lot of ideas and a lot of those ideas are actually already flushed out. Uh, it's just a matter of, uh, you know, we need a little bit more money to make all, get all these features into the game. Well, that's fine. I mean, people can use their imaginations until then. I, yep. I know I do. <laughs> Yep, absolutely. That's why I play fighting games and stuff. It's like, to me, it's an adult version of playing with action figures, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm fucking glad I could have RoboCop versus Terminator and Mortal Kombat. <laughs> Come on. That's awesome. <laughs> uh, yeah, but the, the gaming community, man, the, with all that streaming, it's it's crazy. Like, my, my 12-year-old son's doing that now. He's He's got his own YouTube, and within, like, a week or two of being on there, he's, like, getting all these subscribers, and they're doing that, the Fortnite gaming and all oh, that. Yeah. It's like... I got a ten year old that does it. Yeah, isn't it crazy? It's like, oh, just uh, you know, did doubles with so and so. Watch us get. I don't even know the lingo for it. You know, I I think it's duels. Duels. There you go. I've been challenged to a duel once, and let me tell you, leather gloves fucking hurt when you get. (laughs) (laughs) But it was funny because my my kids actually aren't wrestling fans. uh too much they know they know the big names of wwe but Mm. even the concept of like tag team wrestling and and my son's like can we play duels i'm like what are you talking about i'm like (laughs) he's like we're on the same team because that's a that's a mode in Fortnite. yeah yeah. i'm like yes it's called tag team i'm like please don't call it that (laughs) (laughs) what's a duel (laughs) yeah oh man that's a hell of a story right there mike (laughs) um so going forward, like say say you guys get the success with this game, um, do you have any plans to do something else outside of RetroMania? Yeah, I mean, there's a, I have a bunch of ideas like floating around in my head that I would love to do. Um, you know, some in you know, do we go another two D pixel art game? Do we do a three D mm-hmm. something? Um, I'm a big fan of beat 'em ups, like the ones like uh, Simpsons, oh. X Men Arcade. Yeah. game turtles and all that do we do something there or i'm also getting into vr a little bit um so I, that might be an avenue i want to go all back from you know 2d pixel art of the 90s to some future, <laughs> futuristic vr stuff <laughs> right uh, i think that technology is still a little little ways off for like real mainstream um because it's, it's still pretty setup intensive and there's a lot of quirkiness uh to it right now i think but it's definitely a cool technology, and I, I see things going that way, and I would love to get involved there as well. Oh, yeah. Now, as far as uh, beat-em-ups, I mean, you, you big Streets of Rage fan at all? Have you, uh, played that? you know, I have it downloaded. And I haven't really played it much, but everything I've read is it's like the best beat-em-up to come out since who oh, knows yeah. when. Oh, it's, uh, it's, it's amazing. And they, they throw a lot of the retro stuff in there. You can unlock the retro sprites yeah. and use them in the game, and it's, it's so cool. And it is so freaking difficult, <laughs> too. You know, the old school, it's like, yeah, they almost have, like, a cheat code or just spend days trying to get through right. that damn game, man. Yeah, Mike uh, Mike T, my, my, my social media guy, again, he's, he put it in the top five ever of his beat-em-up list. Oh, yeah. I, I so. could see that. It's fun. It's, it's fun. The graphics are great. The content's great. Like, it, it just kind of came out of nowhere for me because I thought, I thought they did something before like a Streets of Rage sequel, or it was called something different. Right. And I didn't know that it, that Streets of Rage 4 had even dropped. I just I think I saw somebody on YouTube or a clip, and I was like, Streets of Rage 4? What the hell? <laughs> like, let me look into this. Oh, you can buy it? Right? Yeah, I got it. I'm playing it right now. Next thing you know, I'm doing a PS4 test stream on yep. that. Like, hey, it's your boy The Juice. I don't know what the hell I'm doing, but you're going to listen to me talk shit while I play Streets of Rage 4. <laughs> You getting it? So, do you do any uh, online gaming yourself? Not, not a ton. Um, mm-hmm. Like I said, most of my time is spent on this game right now. I, I was, right. I was, you know, before I really got started on this, I was playing a ton of Skyrim, which is actually a single player game. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, um, I've played through that on the Switch, and I played it on the PC. On top of that, um, you know, I played a lot of Breath of the Wild. The only thing I, I played some NBA playgrounds actually for the Switch online, um, but you know, actually no, I'm not not, not NBA playgrounds. I played that, but um, 2K. I'm sorry, 2K online. 
uh, NBA 2K. So Ooh, I'm going to have to challenge you. Oh, you got it for uh, I'm not that, I get my butt kicked in my own <laughs> house. I can't beat anybody in my house. <laughs> I love but, that game, man. Yeah, that's a great game. So, I mean, I don't, I don't play a ton of online stuff, but I do play, you know, like the 2K stuff um, and stuff like that. I, I've, I've tried – I forget what fighting game I went online with, and I just got my butt kicked constantly, and I'm like, forget it. And, I mean, with those, it's really like pick and choose. Yeah, that's why usually I try to get them right when they come out because you have this small window of like people right. don't know what the hell they're doing. You can get <laughs> some online achievements or whatnot. Right. And then after like a day goes by, all these kids have mastered it because they've been, you know, hopped up on Mountain Dew and right. God knows what else, uh, Takis and shit. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, yeah, I playing. think I remember playing Mortal Kombat versus DC online. Ooh, oh yeah. Uh, and I just got getting my stuff. butt kicked left and right. <laughs> yeah. It's tough, man. The, a lot of those fighting games and the way that they're uh, – I, I actually just got Tekken 7. I mean, that's like – if you want to talk about, like, the ultimate button masher fighting game, I mean, it's got to be Tekken. <laughs> like, it's doing these power moves out of nowhere or maybe uh, even, like, a Marvel versus Capcom deal. Right. Um, well, so- I heard Marvel versus Capcom 2 was supposed to be at Evo this past year. I mean, what? it didn't happen. But they were bringing that back, yeah. Whoa, like revamped and all that? Yeah, they're just – I think – I don't know what they're running on. If they're running it on uh, – they might have been using the Dreamcast to do it. Oh, man. <laughs> don't miss, quote me on what system. Dreamcast. Don't quote me on what system it was, but I know I would read or heard somewhere that they were going to – it was going to be at Evo this year. Damn, that would be awesome. That's To me, that's like the ultimate fighting game. I had so much fun on that. Yeah. I, I had it for Dreamcast. I, I, I still have it on 360 when they had it in the arcade. Yeah. Um, you actually, I have it on PS2, actually. Really? <laughs> yeah, I went through <laughs> yeah. and unlocked everything. Uh, yep. It's funny, Don't I didn't get a Dreamcast until much later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, when they were like 20 bucks? <laughs> yeah, they were super cheap. I think mm-hmm. I got it to import Fire Pro Wrestling D. Oh, really? Which was an import only, yeah. Oh, man, back all that Dreamcast stuff, I mean, you could just burn games on yeah, what, I like know, a CDR? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Part of the reason, other than uh, no like real third party support, yeah, that, that thing went under, which is a shame because, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but wasn't that like really the first online um, gaming console? I think the one that tried to take it mainstream, yeah, right. You know, I think um, for like online play and stuff like that, yeah, I think I think you're right. R.I.P. Dreamcast. We'll miss you. And every year, every September, there's always somebody talking about like it's coming back. Nine nine ninety. What was it? Nine nine ninety nine. Yep. Nine nine ninety nine. Nine. God, I remember that old advertising for that? When the, didn't they have a? Uh, who was it? It was like the Hibachi guy or the samurai dude. Wasn't he like the <laughs> spokesperson for Dreamcast? <laughs> Oh, man, what happened, Sega? I what happened? Know. I just saw an interesting story. There was like, so after the failure of that and, you know, their dumbass decision to keep, you know, they had, what, Saturn or whatever coming out, and then they were still adding on to the Genesis and not yeah, phasing it out. Yeah. And I, I'm guilty. I mean, I had a 32X, you know, and uh, her, yeah, that's what it was. Wasn't it the, the top-loading one? Yeah, that was the 32X. Yeah, and uh, and that attached to your Sega, which attached to the Sega CD. Yep. Which, if Saturn was coming out, what well, what the hell do you even need Sega CD for? I remember, God, was it like Sewer Shark or something? Yeah, like that, that was it. I had that. I actually liked that game. That game, that game was like about the only decent game they had. There might have been one other one, but I I, I don't really remember playing much of the Sega right. CD. What was, what would you say your favorite console has been like over the years like out of the arcades like home console? Yeah, uh, that's a tough one. I you know I, I probably I must have put the most hours into probably Super Mario on the NES. Like so, I mean that was a big one. I mean I played a lot though. I had the Atari eight hundred computer was my first gaming console. <laughs> so we had. Um, we had Centipede for that, Star Raiders, Missile Command, uh, games like that. But I was probably a big Sega Genesis was because that's you know that's what I had in college, and we played a ton of NHL hockey. 
Oh yeah, NHL and, uh, '95 was my shit. And we would play it, and we would we turned it into a drinking game, which you do most things in college. And we would <laughs> we would pull goalies, and basically <laughs> you drink every goal. So you you pull the goalies out and um, and just have fun. <laughs> See who stays awake. <laughs> All right. But oh, yeah, I, I've really like I had I had an NES. <laughs> I sold my NES to buy my Genesis. I got the Sega CD. I actually never had a 32X. I sold the Se- Genesis and the Sega CD to buy a 3DO. Oh yeah, I had one of those. <laughs> oh um, man, and that was and I bought it before <laughs> they dropped in price. Like oh my god, I spent so much money on that thing. Oh, but they were like, super Star- expensive. Star- Way of the Warrior, I actually really liked. Even though it was a pretty crappy game, but I I liked it because I like Mortal Kombat like you. I like that kind of digitized yeah. graphics. Oh yeah. Um, and I played Star Control Two was a really fun game, but 3D was the first one that had like a 32 bit Madden game, and that's really why I bought it um, because it had that next level Madden that just blew everything else away. Um, and then I think I sold that to get a PlayStation, and then I went PlayStation, PlayStation Two. And I actually didn't even have an N64 till like later in life, so I had to go back and play all the the wrestling games on it much later. I just couldn't afford it at the time to get both. At that time, I only had one one version of the console. Like I never had a Super Nintendo. I never had a mm-hmm. Sega Master System. You know, I just didn't have enough money to buy all this stuff. Uh, oh, yeah. it's funny now I have a little more money to buy consoles and games, but now I just don't have time to play them. <laughs> <laughs> right? Because you got to make your own. Yeah. It's a tough life, man. Yeah, I know. It's a (laughs) first world problem, right? (laughs) Right. Uh, So you guys, I mean, you got some merch uh, for sale stuff too, right? Like in pro wrestling tees, Retromania shirts? Yeah, we have a couple t-shirts up. And we're probably all of our guys uh, that you see on our website, all the caricatures, they're going to be up on the store pretty soon, probably the next probably two weeks. We'll have everybody's shirt up there. And and those shirts, uh, the proceeds for those shirts get split between the wrestlers and and uh, a charity of their choice. So we oh, actually don't, awesome. we don't take any of the the proceeds from uh, the shirts. Um, and you know, they, a portion goes to charity and a portion goes to the wrestler. Who did the artwork for that? Yeah, so um, a, a, a studio called Foo Essence, which is actually out of Spain. Uh, two guys by the name of Fran and Miguel, who I've known for about 10 years. Mm. Um, they've, I've commissioned them to do, I found them uh, years ago and they commissioned some artwork and I've just kept in touch with them through the years. And when I started uh, retro mania, I knew I wanted to get them to do all these caricatures and some, some of the, they did the story, uh, mode artwork as well. Just really talented. Both of them. Oh yeah. Um, it's it's really cool too because it gives it its own unique style you yep. know I, I love the exaggerated artwork the character work um it, it, it to me it really makes every wrestler like pop you know yep. i mean you yeah, we get- definitely wanted to you know one of the things we don't have a huge roster at least not yet so we really treat um every wrestler and every announcement we do real special we want the attention on them we want the details there um, we're trying to get even the sprite work as detailed as we can on each of the wrestlers as well. And you guys, uh, so I mean, you got you got a stacked roster, but you also um, tell everybody out there listening and watching who you have for your referees and for your commentary team. Yeah, so um, we have Ryan from House of Hardcore, who is a, is a referee, um, and then we have uh, Pat, who is an indie wrestler. Or an indie referee, he's he's worked all over the place. So they're going to be the first two to start, and our commentary team is going to be Ian Ian Riccaboni from uh, Ring of Honor uh, and Cole Cabana, who used to be at Ring of Honor. The two of them were the 2018 commentary team of the year, according to Bill Apter. Uh, so, and I think we signed them back in 2018, or maybe a little earlier in 2019. Um, nice. So they're going to be doing uh, the commentary. They re- recorded a bunch of lines already. Um, and then we're going to be announcing our um, a ring announcer shortly. Ooh, man. <laughs> There's one guy that you, he just, you heard about the Fink, right? Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. unfortunately, we looked into that. Well, you he was, he's WWE for life, so we couldn't have oh, got yeah. him. Yeah. But um, I would have loved to have had him in it. 
which sucks because they didn't ever do anything with him. Yeah. I mean, I guess other than he was like their first official employee, so maybe he just sat at home and collected a check, but it's not, he wasn't doing many of the video games, you know, unless 2K had like the uh, old school storyline and they had him, you know, right. like something like that. So that, that, that kind of sucks, man. But yeah, I heard a uh, funny story about him, Tommy Dreamer told uh, on his podcast. Uh, what's that? That uh, he, he was reaching like some milestone for number of years worked at WWE or something. Mm. And dr right before he hit, it was like, I don't know if it was, you know, 30 years or whatever it was. He, he says, hey, let's fire him for one day so he doesn't hit this milestone. <laughs> and the clock <laughs> has to start over or something. And then hire him right back. And they're like, you can't say that. Why would you say that? And he's like, he actually liked the idea, but I thought it was kind of funny. Yeah. They would end another streak, right? Right. right. would <laughs> be good at that. Um, is there any other games that you're looking forward to outside of uh, what you're creating? <clears throat> on, well, I'm, you know what? I'm really curious to see um, what the next gen consoles do. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you can have all this power, but until you have a game or developer that knows what to do with it, who knows? Because the one thing with that, like the Switch isn't super powerful, but Breath right. of the Wild was the best game I'd played in a while. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I really, really got into that game. So I'm interested to see what the next gen, but the one that's not next gen, but it's coming out for the PS4, Ghosts of... Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. It's uh, like some samurai thing or yeah, whatever. Yeah, on the PS4. That looks that looks pretty cool. Yeah, um, I've I've seen some of the test uh, videos that they've done for. Uh, I think I've seen both systems. I know I saw the Xbox One for sure, and I thought I saw some PS. Yeah, I did see the PS Five. Um, I mean, it looks great. Yeah, but, but what you know, it's get, there's only so much graphics can do. You know what I mean? If the gameplay sucks. Yeah. That Do you think what, game. so it takes usually takes a, the actually the developers a little while to kind of get in a groove and being able to unlock the potential of of the system that they're actually putting on there. But the specs are incredible, so we'll see what they can do. I th I would think with all the power in these new um machines coming out and even some of the current stuff like uh man like it would be cool to see another like an old school Mortal Kombat, you know, where it's digitized or right. like the wrestlemania the arcade game it'd be super cool i mean it, in essence isn't that as close as we're ever going to get to like looking like we do now and like but we're video game sprites and right, doing right. crazy shit <laughs> you know you think video games will ever reach that point well i think eventually that it'll become indistinguishable you know yeah probably in our lifetime i mean i think it's going to be a point where mm -hmm. you're in vr and you're walking around and it seems like real people in the real world Man, so it's going to be like, uh, what was that damn movie? Oh, Ready Spielberg. Player One. Yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you'll be able to interact like that. They can in that because I mm -hmm. think, I don't know. I mean, eventually you probably will, but I just I just feel like I don't think we're too far off. I, I would say 10 years and we'll be walking around in VR and it'll be, I mean, because they're yeah. not far. I mean, if you've played any VR stuff, you get immersed. The immersion level mm -hmm. in those games is incredible. Um, How many times have you walked into the damn wall? Yeah, yeah, that is tough. I mean, <laughs> the, the logistics. Do you know what I have the biggest problem with? What? Is um, and my brother has it, and he has a fan in the room where his is. Mm -hmm. So, and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm six, almost, I'm six two. So when I reach my arms up over my head, I hit the fan. Oh, you know, pretty annoying. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, it wasn't on, luckily, but. You know, you just you just if you suddenly put your arm up or something uh, and hitting it, I thought I broke it one time, but yeah, I've knocked stuff over before and stuff like that. So I think you know when that I it's funny I've never played the PlayStation VR though, so that's something I would I would like to play Skyrim over again with that. Well, that's the one I've heard that's uh, really been making a lot of headlines was the PlayStation one, right? But it's like ungodly expensive, isn't it like five or six hundred bucks or something like that. Yeah, they're all pretty. I think the PlayStation one might be a little bit cheaper than that, but maybe cheaper. Know, yeah, yeah, but I know like Steam or the Valve one and Oculus. Oculus has a new built-in one now, so it's, you don't need a separate PC. But the technology will get there. I think it's getting better at each iteration. So, and 
the way technology progresses now is just amazing, yeah. you know. I mean, it's crazy to think we were playing, you know, Atari and Nintendo and, you know, as kids and young yeah, adults. Less like, than 30 years ago. Yeah. Right? And looking at this stuff like, man, when is this shit going to look good? I know. <laughs> And now you still like, like I still go back and play like Mike Tyson's Punch Out for fairly oh. frequently, you know. Oh, it's yeah. just and I have like you know I played Spider Man the the latest one you know it's uh, two years old now but the the one by Insomniac it's an amazing game it looks incredible yeah. it's super fun to play but I still go back and play like I just have a lot of fun and my kids actually are big into some old NES they're big fans of Tyson uh, uh, for Punch Out Super Punch Out. Um, you know, a bunch of games on those uh, Donkey Kong Country for for uh, Super Nintendo. Oh yeah, Super Mario World is still a classic game, and and you know, say what you will, like oh, we, you know, we're just old, but it's not the case because my kids play that stuff too, and they don't have any of the nostalgia for it as we do. But it's right. like it's fun, you know, it's just mm -hmm. a fun game. There's just something about you know controlling a character on the screen, and even if it's not super state of the art graphics they're still easy to pick up and play the old school stuff and there's that fun factor i mean that's what mobile gaming is you know what i mean it's exactly mo in most cases it's not state-of-the-art graphics it's that pick up and play and anybody can just jump in and play it and that's what we're doing with retromania as well and that's good you need that you know it's it, it's like well, you try to tell a jaded wrestling fan or something it's like if you're trying to tell them about aew you know like you, I, to me, AEW is a perfect example of like what you're saying. It's something that anybody can just jump in, whether you're new or you're old school jaded fan or whatever, just jump right into it and like feel, feel good about what you're watching, you know, because entertainment value and, you know, the, the professionalism as far as the wrestling and everything goes. So it's good that you have that with the game too, especially when you're representing the sport of professional wrestling, you know, and the Absolutely. entertainment and all that. So that's super cool. You you got to have that, you know, for sure. For sure. And you guys, you guys, uh, I, I just want to congratulate you again, Mike, cause you guys are firing on all cylinders. It's <laughs> been, it's been an absolute pleasure to watch the growth of this game and, and to see the buzz, a huge fucking buzz about this game because you guys got the entire wrestling community, a buzz and, and just ready to make it rain, you know? So <laughs> good on, <laughs> good From on your you lips to that. God's ears. <laughs> that's right baby yeah from the america dreams list <laughs> well mike i'd like to thank you once again for coming back on here we'll have to do this again sometime man uh let everybody know real quick where they can find you at and uh your planned release date for the game yeah so we're retromania wrestling.com um all of our social media at retrosoft studios we're on youtube instagram twitter facebook we have a reddit subreddit um and maybe maybe we'll join tiktok with you who knows yeah <laughs> you need to get on there man i tell you <laughs> it's and weird then, i still i still don't know if what i'm putting on there is supposed to be like tiktok or not you know but right. i do it anyways <laughs> and then uh release date we you can pre you can pre-order now on the switch and for steam on our website though not on the eShop or the steam store uh and get a five dollar discount 24.99 and we will be on all the online stores when we're about 30 days out from launch. We are still working towards the, the end of July. Um, but like I said, if it's not ready, we will push it a few weeks to, to finish up that polish and make sure everybody has a great experience once they do get it in their hands. Hell yeah. And they're going to get it in their hands. Just like I'm going to get you guys in my hands if you don't listen to the Juice Pro Wrestling Podcast because we're available on all podcasting platforms every week and we get badass mofos like Mike Herman from Retrosoft Studios to talk about all the cool shit that they're doing and what they got going on. Sretton, tell the people, tell them goodbye. Goodbye. You're the absolute shits. <laughs> hey, until next time, subscribe at jpdub.com. Wet them up. Wet them up. Wet them up. Wet them up! Oh my god, I'm so excited for Retromania Wrestling! It's gonna be such a buzz, I can stick for you! Die it! Ah! Buy the game! You gonna so do what? sex to me?